Hey guys, um, we're going to jump ahead to chapter five in this strange year. I think it's going to be best maybe if we just do this. So we are skipping ahead to chapter five on probability. So we begin by talking about randomness, probability, and simulation. So let's start with this scenario. So Pepsi claims there's a one in six chance of winning their latest bottle cap promotion. So you buy the Pepsi, you open the bottle, you look at the bottle cap, and they say one in six is a winner, right? So let's say seven friends go to the store, each of them buys a bottle of Pepsi, and three of them win. The question is, is Pepsi's claim inaccurate? So three of them win out of seven. That seems kind of high if there's only a one in six chance of winning, right? So what we want to do is figure out how likely would it be for three or more uh, people to win in this bottle promotion if, in fact, there was only a one in six chance of winning? So how likely would it be for three or more out of seven to win, right? So one way we can answer this question is by simulation, okay? So let's say I'm rolling this die, and I just say, okay, if it lands on six, that's going to be a winner, right? Because we know a six has a one in six chance of landing face up when I roll this die. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll it seven times and count the number of sixes I get, right? So let me demonstrate that. So here we go. I'm going to roll the die seven times. So the first time I get a five, that's not a six. That's also not a six. So I'm 0 for 2 so far. I got another 2, so I'm 0 for 3. I got a 3, so I'm 0 for 4. Number of 6 is a winner. I got a 3, so I'm 0 for 5. So 2 more. I got a 1, I'm 0 for 6. And now I got a 6. So 1 time out of 7. So based on that one simulation, I had one winner out of 7. Now, if I do it again, will I get 1 out of 7 again? I don't know. Let's try it. So one more time. So I'm going to roll the die seven times. Number of six is a winner. 0 for 1 so far. 0 for 2. 1 for 3, I got a 6. 2 for 4, I got another 6. 2 for 5. 2 for 6. 2 for 7. Okay. So clearly, I'm not going to get one out of seven every time because I got one out of seven that first time. I got two out of seven the second time. Okay, now I want to start collecting the results I'm getting. So let's start making a dot plot out of it. So this is the number of wins out of seven. The first time I did it, I had one win out of seven. The second time I did it, I had two wins out of seven. Let's see how often these results come up. Notice it's possible to get zero wins out of seven. One, two, three, four, five, six. I suppose it's even possible to get seven wins out of seven. Now, of course, it would take a very long time to do this by rolling the die over and over. So I'll speed it up a little bit by showing you how we can simulate. Um, and this is interesting because it's like two layers of simulation. So by rolling the die seven times, I'm simulating seven friends going to the store. But now I'm going to simulate rolling a die seven times in the calculator. So let's do that right now. All right, so uh, here I am in the calculator, and I want to show you how I could simulate the rolling of a die seven times. So if you go to your calculator and you hit the math button, you'll get a series of menus here. Uh, we want to go over to the probability menu, so that's P-R-O-B. And we have a bunch of different ways of generating random numbers. Uh, rand int is choice five, and this one will generate a random integer. So I'm going to choose that one. And when I choose it, notice what it asks for. It asks for a lower and an upper. So I want to simulate rolling a die. So the lowest number I can get is 1. The highest integer I can get, of course, on the die is 6. And then n is going to be the number of times I roll it. So that'll be 7, right? And then it says paste. So I'm going to hit enter, and it says paste. Now, if you have an older version of the calculator, you won't see that previous screen. It'll just say rand int. And then you'll see just the open parentheses. So what you want to do is remember that the first entry is going to be your lower, the second entry is going to be your upper, and then the third entry is going to be the number of times you do it. Okay. But hopefully most of you have the new calculator, so you can just enter it the way I did there. So if I hit enter, it gives me seven results of rolling the die um, seven times. 
And you can see that the first two times were sixes. So two out of those seven were sixes. So we're counting a six as a win. So according to that, we had two winners. If I just hit enter again on the calculator, it'll give me another set of seven. So here we have how many sixes? Well, two sixes again. So two winners. I'll hit enter again. And as you can see, hopefully you see I'm keeping a record of all the results I'm getting. Uh, so the next three winners. So we did have three winners there. I hit enter again. And it looks like no sixes. So I had zero winners that time, right? So if you can see the stop plot, it's the beginning of the distribution of how many winners you would get if it was a one in six chance of winning and seven friends went to the store over and over and over again. Because remember, what we're interested in knowing is, well, how likely is it for three or more to win? Now, of course, I need a lot more than this to get a good handle on the distribution. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the video so that I can do this kind of behind the scenes. And then what you'll see here is the result of me doing it many, many times. Okay, so here's the result of me doing that um, with a total of 50 repetitions. So basically, I simulated rolling this die seven times, counting the number of sixes, number of wins, out of seven each time. And I did, like I said, 50 repetitions. You saw the first couple. But after 50 repetitions, 10 times we had zero out of seven winners. Uh, 20 times we had one out of seven. By the way, it goes higher than the board, so sorry about that, but it should be like the dots going up to here-ish. Um, um, two winners happened 15 times, three winners four times, and I had four winners once. Never had five, six, or seven winners, which I guess is expected, right? It will be unusual, although not impossible, to have seven winners or six winners or five winners. But our question was, how likely is it to get three or more? So we had three or more, one, two, three, four, five times. And it happened at five times out of the 50 repetitions I did, right? So, of course, that's 10%. So, based on the simulation, it looks like you're going to get three or more winners in a competition or a contest, I guess. In a contest where one out of six of those bottles are winners. So, if that's true, that one out of six bottles are winners, it's... Uh, about a 10% chance, we're saying, of having at least three winners out of seven if seven friends go to the store. So how rare is 10%? Well, if something happens 10% of the time, it's kind of rare, but not exactly that rare, I guess. You might be familiar with the 5% number, perhaps, where that's usually considered the cutoff for being significantly rare enough for us to say, yeah, that's that's really unusual. So 10% kind of unusual, but not that unusual. So if seven, seven friends went to the store and three of them won, we wouldn't say, ah, you know, I don't think Pepsi has it right. Pepsi could have it right. And those seven friends just got lucky on that particular day, right? Because it's not that unusual for it to happen 10% of the time. But what I want to do next is really talk about what probability really means. Because I don't think most people really understand what we mean when we talk about probability. So let's talk about that next. All right, so here I have a quarter. Yeah, you can see that it's heads on this side, tails on the other side. And I'm gonna flip the coin and let's see what happens. So I flip the coin, right? And I got it under my hand. Now, if I asked you what the probability that it landed on heads was, what would you say? Now I imagine most of you, if not all of you, might say one half. And if you all said a half, you'd all be wrong. Because the coin has already been flipped. So I don't know what it is under my hand. But the probability is either one or zero. So if it's on heads right now, the probability is one. If it's not heads, the probability is zero because the coin has already been flipped. right? And that's how we think about this. Now if I ask the question while it was flipping in the air, Maybe you could say one half, right? But it's really either one or zero. Now, I have this applet here that can simulate the flipping of a coin. So I'm going to go ahead and do one flip. So there we go. So it flips it once. Notice it landed on tails. 
It's counting the number of heads or the proportion of heads. And the proportion is zero because it was 0 for 1. So now I'm going to do another flip. We got tails again. So now we're 0 for 2. So the probability, if you will, or the proportion of heads, that's really what we're talking about, is still zero. Zero out of two. I'll flip the coin a third time. I got tails again. So the proportion's over three. Fourth time. All right, I got heads here. So I'm one for four. So we're at 0.25. That's where we're at after four flips. I'll do another flip. And this time, heads. So now I have two out of five. So now we're up to 0.4. Uh, but let's do, like, say, five flips. So let's see, do five, flip, five flips in a row here so we can see what this graph is doing. So right now I'm above 50%, and it looks like I'm actually at 60% after a total of 10 flips. And let's see what would happen if we did another five. So we'll do another five. Now it's up to 0.6364, now it's two thirds, right? Now it's down to 0 0.6154, 0 0.6429, two thirds again. We'll do five more flips, 0.6875. 0 0.7059, 0 0.7222, 0 0.7368, 0 0.75. So three quarters of the time, heads, right? And we've only flipped it 20 times, but we got 15 heads. Okay. Five more flips. Okay. So we are not really that close to 0.5, right? But we've only flipped the coin 25 times, right? So let's see what happens if we click 1,000 flips. Okay, so it flipped it 1,000 times. And what do we know, uh, or what do we notice uh, that is eventually happening here with the proportion of heads? This red line clearly is at 0.5. So when we first did it, we were well below that at zero, the first couple of flips, then it kind of gradually worked its way over 0.5 and then kind of hovered around here. But eventually, after flipping it so many times, it looks like it's zeroing in on this proportion of 0.5. So you can see the total is 1,025 flips, 501 of those were heads. So we're really getting close to that 0.5 number, right, that one half. Because what we're seeing here is that probability is really defined as a long run process, right? We don't really talk about the probability of getting heads on one flip because the probability of being a half really means that if you flip this coin over and over and over and over many, 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 many times, you're going to approach a proportion of one half. And that is the definition of what probability is. It's what's happening in the long run after many, many, many times. Okay, so let's get back to the board and discuss a few of these ideas further. Okay, so let's try to encapsulate what we're discovering about probability here. Um, first, we're gonna say this. Uh, randomness is unpredictable in the short run, but has a predictable pattern in the long run. So we have this random process of flipping this coin and we flip it over and over and over. We can't predict what's, what the coin is gonna do on the next flip, or even in the next five flips. But what we can predict is that after many, many flips, the proportion of heads will approach this number 0.5. So that's a very interesting thing about randomness. It's completely unpredictable in the short run, but actually quite predictable in the long run. And that's what we're saying here. And that kind of leads to our definition of this word probability. The probability of any outcome of a chance process is the proportion of times the outcome would occur in a very long series of repetitions, okay? That's what prob probability is really all about. And we have this law called the law of large numbers. And this law of large numbers guarantees that the proportion of heads closes in on 0.5 after many, many, many flips, right? If we only do a few flips, you know, it might be around 0.5, but as we saw, after a few flips, it might be pretty far away from 0.5. But it won't be far away from 0.5 at all if you do it many, many, many times. So that's the law of large numbers. Um, 
people get confused by um, saying there's such a thing as the law of averages. You might hear people talk about that, but that's not a real thing. So sportscasters uh, do this all the time. So if you have a, a hitter that's a great hitter, let's say they hit 350, so they, they get a hit 35% of the time. But let's say they're on a bad streak where they went 0 for 8. So they'll say, well, based on the law of averages, when he comes up to the plate the next time, he's going to get a hit because he's due for a hit. But that's not true at all. That next at-bat, he still has a .35 chance of getting a hit. Just like with the next flip of a coin, no matter what happened before that flip, it's going to be .5 on the next flip as a probability. So there's no such thing as the law of averages. People want to apply it to the short run. But what you have to remember is that the short run is very unpredictable. So if we're talking about this hitter that hits 350, meaning they get a hit 35% of the time, we can't predict what they're going to do after going 0 for 8. But we can predict that over the course of the entire season, right, where they're doing 600 or 700 at-bats, that they will approach that proportion of 35% after many, many at-bats. So the law of large numbers is a real thing. The law of averages is not. Okay, let's wrap this up by going back to where we started, where we were simulating how many times uh, you would win if you had seven friends go to the store and we repeated it over and over again if the true probability was one sixth. So what I'm gonna do is, you know, I've done 50 repetitions here, right? Basically, if we wrote out these numbers, you'd have like 10 zeros, right? So 10 of those. And they would have like 20 ones, right? And then 20, you know, a lot of ones. 20 of those. We'd have a whole bunch of twos, right? And then we just have a handful of threes and one four. I want to figure out what the average number of wins is, right? So I'm going to add these all up, right? So I have 10 zeros. I have 20 ones, right? So I'm going to do 20 times one. So I got 20 of those. I have 15 twos. So I'm going to do 15 times two. And then I have, uh, what, four threes. So four times three. And just the one, four. So what is that? 20 plus 30 plus 12 plus 4. So that's 50, 62, I think 66. And that's 66 divided by the number of flips we did. Not flips, but the number of repetitions. Sorry, the number of repetitions I did, number of times I looked at 7. So 66 out of 50... I'm going to do that division here, and this is going to give us the average number of wins that we settled on, and it was 1.32. So 1.32 out of 7. So this was our average, 1.32 out of 7. Now remember, the claim by the Pepsi company was a 1 out of 6 chance of winning, right? So they're saying the probability is 1 sixth. Well, we now know that that's a, a long-term number. Like after many, many repetitions, we're going to zero in on 1 sixth. So one sixth as a decimal, you might know this is 1.666 repeating or whatever. We'll just say 1.1667. But what we got here after doing it, you know, 50 repetitions is we got an average of 1.32 out of seven. So if I do 1.32 divided by seven, let's see what that number is. So 1.32 divided by seven is uh, 0 0.1889, I guess. No, not 0 0.189, I guess. 0.1885, actually. Okay. So, first of all, is this number the same as this number? No, right? But if we kept doing this over and over and over again, by the law of large numbers, this proportion would zero in on this number right here, the 1 sixth number that Pepsi says that the proportion of wins would be, right? So we were doing this simulation based on one out of six because we had a die that we knew would come up landing on a six one out of six times. So we're already getting pretty close to that neighborhood of this number. And again, if we did it many, many times, we would zero in on that probability of one six after many repetitions. And that's your law of large numbers.